Hallelujah. Together shall we raise our voice. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In that light, we shall listen to the passage now. Are you ready? I need an answer from you. Are you ready? I hope you are not. However, I hope you will bear with me for a while. But I love God to be with you. That's more important. I am not important. Now, a lame person, what was his problem? As we explain the detail, please may I repeat the intention. Maybe that situation, maybe the detail of that person can come to you and realize something that is within you. For what? To be kept before the power of God and for his commitment to help you to be established. And therefore, here is a lame person. He was lame at the ankle. By the way, listen carefully. A small defect. Not paralyzed. Not sick throughout. Lame at the ankle. That's all. He could hear. He could see. He could eat. He could speak. He could command. He could laugh. He could cry. He could discuss. He could feel. He could argue. Only one thing. Lame at the angle. Though he could speak. Though he could hear. Though he could laugh. Though he could argue with the others, though he could talk to the other, this little problem affected him the rest of his life. Shall we say praise the Lord together? Together. Praise the Lord. A small weakness we have affects throughout a reality. And therefore as you listen... What is the smallest thing, not great thing, that really is within me today that affects me and pulls me down? Otherwise, what is the preaching, my dear brothers and sisters? Say, you are all at your light. What is the use? God wants to touch each one of us in a very powerful way. Shall we once again say, praise the Lord together. Praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. 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 By the way, he was all right otherwise. He was all right otherwise. I am all right otherwise. I am all right otherwise, except for the laziness. I am all right, except for this little bit of shouting here and there with bad words. The rest I am fine, active, helpful, yes. But then, this little defect takes its effect for the rest of my life. This man was lame. And therefore, the reality, he needed others. One, he could not operate on his own. If he wants to get somewhere, please... He wants to get some way and he cannot get where he wants to because of this. It could be that the same for us. I am also included. I cannot get where I want to. I want to be at peace. I want to have joy in my life. I want to comfort. I want everything to be so well in my family. But I cannot get within my heart. I cannot get where it wanted, where it should be, uh, should be there because of something pulling me down. And that's what happened to this lame person. Just because of this lame at the angle, being lame at the angle, he could not get to where he wanted. He needed others. It affected his life. He had to be carried. Others are getting involved in his life. Please, a defect or a weakness that we have, don't think it's ours. Others get involved. I hope you will realize that. If you are sick, mother gets involved from my duty. My goodness, I cannot cook now. Let me be with my son. Others get involved. You cannot walk. So the neighbor gets involved. I will carry you. Therefore he cancels his, you know, the timely going to the office. Okay, don't worry. I will be late. No problem. I can give excuse. I can be later to the manager. I am late. Don't worry. I will carry you. Others get involved. So please, brothers and sisters, do not ever think, you know, the particular weakness that we cherish or we keep is only for us. It gets others involved. If I don't study... Parents are really racking their brain, my goodness, how to really save him, meet the teachers and canceling their programs, how to get the best of books, how to get the best of guide, how to get the best of tutor, how to get, get you for a tuition. See the whole thing, others are involved. Maybe everything is so well, marriage proposal came and they said, we don't want the girl. And therefore others can what is happening to the girl? Is she refusing? So we get others involved, whether you want it or not, 
others get involved. Not in a bad way, I mean, not in a negative way, positively. Shall we say praise the Lord together? Praise the Lord. When I say this, I am putting in a different way. You know, there is a particular report about a boy. Some of you might know because I have said that. A boy is dying in the hands of a mother. A young boy. And he is conscious. He knows that he will die. And, and the scene is this in the movie. It's a documentary. And the child is literally is going to die. And the child is conscious and telling the mother, Mom, I followed the traffic rules. I walked on the pavement, not on the road. I followed the signal. It's the other guy who refused to follow. He is living. I am dying. Why? Mom, I followed the traffic rules. I walked on the pavement. I crossed on the zebra line, not the other way. And I waited for the right signal to cross the road. And I'm very careful to follow the traffic rules and regulations. The other guy, is he who violated. But he is living and I am dying. And the context is this. A drunken driver drove the truck onto the pavement and the child was hit. And underneath, the doctor writes, the beautiful uh, document, the doctor writes, please don't think that certain things are your business alone. Your defect gets others involved, either for their growth or maybe for the destruction. In this case, the child was destroyed. Please realize, don't it, there's some say, what, what do you care? If I don't study, what do you care? Okay, no problem. I will do what I want, no problem. The freedom is, please understand, without your knowledge, I know, or you will know, without your knowledge, yes, with, very often with a, you could be snoring away at night, sleeping away comfortably, even at the time, there could be tears in the eyes of someone. Oh, I don't know, she has not passed. She has got wrong companionship. She has not realized how things can be done. Oh, he has not realized how I can put him to the best of job. But he's refusing to go. He's now only seeing the momentary difficulty. My goodness, I've contacted so many people, I'm waiting for their answer. Please, while you sleep comfortably denying something, while you do, I don't care, yes, very good, no problem, but I'm telling this is a freedom. Even while you exercise freedom, please understand, because of a weakness some way, not because, you know, we are blaming each other, but rather the fact, all of us are weak, that weakness some way gets others involved in many ways, mentally, physically, or whatever, and perhaps we never know that. In this context, there are people to carry him. He does know that he is actually getting them involved every day. And the Bible says he was carried to the gate of the temple every day. Shall we say praise the Lord together? Every day he was carried to the gate. Let's see the fact now very clearly. His weakness made him depend on others. Whether he wanted or not, others had to get involved in his life. He could not operate on his own. That affected the rest of his life. He had to be carried. Others had to be concerned about him too. And now he is carried to the gate of the temple and placed there. And what does he do? This is what we shall know. Every day he is placed at the gate. And what does he do? Give me something. Give me something. Give me something. Give me something. He gets something or he may not get. Evening is carried back. Again others involved. Back to his house. Next day. Brought again. Give me something. Give me something. Next day again. Carried back to the house in the evening. Next day again at the beautiful gate. Give me something. Give me something. Shall we say praise the Lord together? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Every defect will make us crave for happiness next moment. Please, I'm tense. Leave me alone. Don't make me pray now. Let me drink a little. Let me go to the companion. Be free. So every day we want to settle that. As I share this, please, I don't know how to explain that in detail, but I pray that the Holy Spirit reveals something new for that, not for me. Let you grow. And the commitment to the Lord shall become very powerful in you for a real turning point in your life. Shall we once again say praise the Lord together. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And what does he do? Give me something, that's all. Because of weakness, I cannot manage to give me something. I cannot study now, plus I won't have money. Give me. I am tense, therefore please don't tell me all these rules. and Please leave me alone. Okay. It comes to that effect actually. Please, do not misunderstand me. It is not that you do this and that. We are telling a reality which all of us, including me, go through. And he was focused only on that. He has focused only on that. How? Focused on the weakness of the angle. He is asking something. Nothing beyond. Give me something. And he got something, went back. Maybe one day will be more, the other day could be less. And listen carefully now. One day, I hope you'll understand that one day could be for you today or at this very moment. Shall we say praise the Lord together? One day for the turning point for Peter was when he caught nothing. One day in the life of that woman was when she went to draw water. One day in the life of the boy was when he brought something for himself. One day was in the life of Zacchaeus when he climbed to the tree. One day was the life of the man who was really raging with anger because that day was his day where God touched him. Therefore, today, angry, upset, rebellious, sad, worried, and that moment you have now could be the day of your turning in your life. A greater opportunity God can seize you for something very, very powerful as a blessing for yourself and for your family. That's why he mentioned that in between. Not for all of you, please. I know that. Not for all of you. I still believe when God's word is given, you know, it doesn't affect every person maybe, but someone over here more than enough. After all, Jesus went after the one that was lost, not the 99, the one that was lost. It's enough that one of you, yes, I would repeat, it's enough one of you in this crowd maybe could have a turning point now because the Lord is with me more than enough. And that's why Jesus after the one that is lost more than the rest. Shall we once again say praise the Lord together. Praise the Lord. Together. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Shall we raise our voice once again and praise God together. Hallelujah. 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 Peter and John passed by. They are explaining this passage for some reality. Not now maybe, when you go back. Peter and John passed by. By the way, let me ask you, I am at the gate every day brought by the other because that is what I manage. And I don't have to know who you are. You may be the prime minister, you may be somebody else, but my point, I am lame at the ankle, I need help now, give me something. If you don't give, I don't bother, run after you. Next person, give me something. And you pass by a group king, give me something. A little lady came, give me something. A priest passed by, give me something. Maybe an officer passed by, give me something. I don't bother about your identity. Why should I know? When I focus on the, my angle of the leg that is weak, and I need something today to be happy, why should I know and be worried who you are? I don't care. And that's what happened to this lame person. He at the gate... Carried by the others, now waiting, give me something. He asked people on that particular day, Peter and John passed by. You must know who is Peter and John. You will say disciples, yes. But more than that, now there is a difference in them. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Shall we say praise the Lord together? Praise the Lord. Filled with the Holy Spirit, anointed after the Pentecost experience. And they passed by. And as usual, please understand the situation. Usual. Why should he know who is John, who is Peter? Oh, they are filled with the Holy Spirit. They can do wonderful things. Why should he know? As usual, give me something. And you will see the turning point. Peter and John stopped there. Looked at him. May I interrupt or maybe make a deviation, please? I want you, in the name of God, to believe something. Maybe you are here with some praise and some intentions. But do you really know who is in your midst? Jesus. Do you ever know what He can do for you? If you really do not know, just some fun, that's all. But if you really know what He can do much more than what you ask for, you will see, I love him. You will commit for him, not for anything else. 
Maybe it's because you do not know what he can do for you. A challenge. I don't commit myself to, uh, to him and my ways. I really deviate myself in any other way. That's sidetracking. But come back to this now. Why should this man know who is Peter and John? Peter and John passed by. And as usual, accustomed, he said, give me something. Peter and John stopped there. And they told him, look at us now. Look at us now. Which would mean, from where you have been focusing so far, from where you are focusing so far, maybe in the light of the pain or the problem, the defect of your angle, no. Forget that. Forget your worry that you have at home because of your parents. Forget your worry because you could not study. Forget your worry because you are not having the complexion as the other. Forget your worry because you are not smart enough as the other. Forget your worry because you are not intelligent as the other. Forget your worry because you do not get the chance as the others have. Forget your worry because you, you don't have brothers and sisters who are very, very smart and very good as others have. Forget your worry you are not the right place of the city. Forget your worry whether you are not taken abroad or wherever you are. Forget your worry whether there are no siblings for you to warm you up with love and care. Shall we say praise the Lord together? Praise the Lord. Maybe I am here still focused on that. And therefore I am getting worked up. I cannot smile, I cannot be happy. They are talking a reality. And therefore he is telling the man, look at us now. You are not looking, you know why, if you put it the other way, because you are intentionally, give me the arms, something little, give me arms, give me arms, give me something, give me something. And when you are intentionally so low, just being happy now, you miss out many things that can be done for you. And that is what Peter and John is convincing him. Hey, come on. You are just focusing on the angle of your leg that is weak and you cannot walk and therefore, you're, and give me something. Please. You are just asking for something for every day. Look at us now. As I mentioned this particular word, please may I repeat that because it comes as a prayer to you as well. Please, from what you are focusing, I am a failure. I cannot study. And I smile because even then I know what my father is, my mother is, I know what my brother is, I know what I have experienced in my college, I know what I experienced in my hostel, I know what my companions have done to me, I know why they are rejected, I know the way I am cheated, I know the way I am exploited, I know the way I am taken advantage of, I know where someone who loved me hated me now, I know the way someone who should have loved me now forgets me. Every detail we are going through, my words are limited. Not that it is not a reality. Angle of the leg weak is a reality, yes. We don't say there is no weakness on the leg. That's why he's limping. That's why he's carried. Sure. But there is something what the Lord wants to do. Look at us now. The turning point. When he, when he looked at their eyes and gazed at them. It's a beautiful sentence. Silver and gold. We have nothing to give you. What a disappointment. Silver and gold, my dear, we have nothing to give you. There is something more powerful and lasting that we want to give you. What is that? In the name of Jesus, get up and walk. And they held a hand and they caught his hand, raised him up. He walked completely healed. He walked home for the rest of his life. Shall we say praise the Lord together? Shall we say praise the Lord together? Praise the Lord. That's the turning point. Not everyday limping and therefore just giving support. If this is not a good news for you, and I say for you, please don't misunderstand me. I am included. This is not a good news for us who are limping, who have been carried every day for some help, some joy. Okay, I am tense now. Let me be comfortable. I am failed now. Let me pass now. But more than that, for the rest of your life to be very powerful, and to be committed to God who wants to give a completely, you know, twist your life. That is where your heart shall be. Not for the others. For the time being, they just give something and leave you as it is. Please understand the difference now. I hope you will understand. The people who passed by gave something and left him to be in the same condition. 
Are you listening? Are you listening? Please think about this. Someone made me happy. Let me ask it. He is still sad. He has not touched my problem. He has not touched my core of my heart. He has not touched the deepest aspect of my life and I am really still worried. Come on, let's be happy. That's all. Leaving me to the same situation. For temporarily I am happy. That's why I said people who are passing by, people who passed by gave arms, yes, but left him every day in the same position. Begging. Dishonorable. Making others involved. Depending on others. Affecting the rest of his life. But now there is the change. That's called seizing the moment and creating the opportunity to alter your destiny. Look at us now. And he looked at them. And Peter and John said, Silver and gold, we have nothing to give you. In the name of Jesus, you shall get up and walk. And therefore, the Lord is asking you, if this is what I can do for you in your life, where shall be your commitment? Please don't commit yourself for silly things and stupid things, what my enemy brings, the devil. Commit yourself to me, and you will see how I will establish you. How, when your ways you dedicate to me, where you're singing or dancing or going about the companions, traveling and studying, maybe you're a failure, it doesn't matter. When you dedicate that to me, when you have me as your focus, I will establish you, trust in me, and I will act for you. This is a promise, and God is faithful in His promise. Praise God together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shall we all stand up, dear brothers and sisters, for a while? All of us. Just be in silence. May that word come to you once again. Psalm number 37, verse 5, Proverbs 16, 3. Commit. That means be loyal, be dedicated, be faithful. Show your allegiance in your attitude and feeling to the Lord. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him. He will act for you. What do you say in your heart? I believe this now. When you say I believe, let that be your seizing the moment, creating an opportunity within you for a real turning in your life. Altering your destiny to remain sad, upset, worried, tense, leaving you in the same situation. Though the circumstances could change. Remember, the man at the gate, the beautiful gate, was left until he met John and Peter. He was left the same way every day. Of course he got help. Of course he got help. Of course people helped him. Of course he received the help. Of course, he accepted help, but the result left to the same situation every day. And when you come to the Lord, when you focus on Him, commit your ways to Him, things will be different for the rest of your life. Much more than what you ever think. Just because your brain cannot understand this, please don't refuse it. The word of God will tell you who can understand the many blessings which God has for man. No human brain can ever comprehend it. But the spirit of God searches and reveals that to man. And may that be revealed as you take a commitment to the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Proverbs 16, 3. Commit your work that means whatever you do, a little work at home, going to do something, your studies, meeting someone, conversation, everything, commit your work to the Lord. And He will establish you in His blessings. May I ask you something? In your mind, what is that lameness that holds you today? And thereby, you do not see anything greater than just the help you need. 
Remember what we said. Look at us. Not on to what you're going through today. Not escapism, of course. Not forgetting. There the reality is said. But let you focus on something very high. So that the twist of your life or something glorious shall take place from now. Not tomorrow postponed. Not day after. Now as you listen to God's word. Shall we raise our hands? All of us now, we are saying the word of God. And I pray as we say the word of God, let the power of that word come to you in your body, maybe as a healing. In your mind, maybe now as peace. In your circumstances, as intervention of God. In your ears, as something very comforting, encouraging you and uplifting you. Therefore, all that you do, your daily activities, your attitudes and feelings, to all that, let us say this together. Would you repeat this after me? Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him. He will act for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Commit your work to the Lord. The Lord will establish you. In his blessings. Hallelujah. 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 O oh Lord, I carry this good news within my heart. And I commit myself to this good news to progress in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. O oh Lord, I carry this good news within me. And I commit myself for the progress of this good news in my life. Hallelujah. If you don't mind, shall we raise our hands now? Say that by heart right now. At least feel happy we have learned the word of God that will really work in our life together. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him. He will act for you together. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him. He will act for you. Together once again. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him. He will act for you. Now Proverbs 16.3 Commit your work to the Lord. The Lord will establish you in His blessings. Together. Commit your work to the Lord. The Lord will establish you in His blessings. Commit your work to the Lord. And the Lord will establish you in His blessings. May the power of this word be with you always and God bless you.